This video is about inverse functions. This is AP Precalculus Topic 2.8. If you appreciate this content, please give it a like. Let f be a continuous function with selected values in the table above. Let g be the inverse of f, such that g equals f inverse. Find the following values if possible. Number 1. Working from the inside out, we begin with f at 2. f at 2 is 9. Moving to the outer function, we see another f of x, so we must now evaluate f at 9. f at 9 is 15. Number 2 is asking us to evaluate g at 11. However, we do not have function g given. We only have function f, and g is the inverse of f. So we have to go, hmm. By the properties of inverses, g at 11 will equal question mark if and only if f at question mark is equal to 11. So we ask ourselves, f at what is equal to 11? Well, f at 5 is equal to 11. So that is the answer. Number 3. We need g at 9. That's the inverse of f at 9. To evaluate the inverse at 9, you ask yourself f at what equals 9. f at 2 equals 9. So that is the answer. Number 4. With this notation, we work from the inside out. So we begin with g at 9. Didn't we just do this? g at 9 was 2, so I'm not going to do that thought bubble over again. Moving to the outside, we see another g. This time we must evaluate g at 2. This is f inverse at 2. To evaluate, you ask yourself f at what is equal to 2. f at negative 1 is equal to 2, so that's the answer. Number 5. With the open circle notation, we work from right to left. So we begin by evaluating f at 5. That's pretty straightforward. f at 5 is 11. Now, moving to the left, we next evaluate f inverse at 11. To evaluate f inverse at 11, you ask yourself f at what equals 11. f at 5 is 11, so that's the answer. Number 6, we need to evaluate f inverse at 2. So you either ask yourself f at what is equal to 2, or you realize that f inverse at 2 and g at 2 are the same thing. Either way, the answer should be negative 1. The function h is defined over the closed interval from negative 4 to 11, as shown above. Let h inverse represent the inverse of h. Number 7. What is the maximum value of h of x? I see where all of this is headed. Let's go ahead and find the domain and range of f and later f inverse. They gave us the domain. I think I will rewrite it in interval notation, so the domain of f of x is the closed interval from negative 4 to 11. That's how far f of x goes from left to right. The range is the y values, so that's how far f of x goes from bottom to top. So the lower limit of the range is down here at negative 3, and the upper limit is 7, so the range of f of x is the closed interval from negative 3 to 7. The domain and range of f and f inverse will be reversed. So since the domain of f of x was from negative 4 to 11, that will be the range of f inverse, negative 4 to 11. Since the range of f of x was negative 3 to 7, that will be the domain 
of f inverse, negative 3 to 7. I just realized I've been saying f and f inverse. This is about h and h inverse. So let me make that correction. Back to number 7. What is the maximum value of h of x? That will be the upper limit of the range. So the maximum value is 7. You can also see it way up at the top. We can find the maximum value of h inverse for number 8 in the same way, even though h inverse is not shown. It will be the upper limit of the range, which is 11. So in general, the maximum value of a function, or the inverse, will be the upper limit of the range, and the minimum value will be the lower limit of the range. Number 9. Find h inverse at 5. We don't have h inverse, only h, so ask yourself, h at what will equal 5? Here's the output value of 5. Turns out h at 0 is equal to 5. Number 10. Find h inverse at negative 2. Ask yourself h at what is negative 2. Here's the output value of negative 2. We see that h at 9 is negative 2. Number 11. For this nested notation, we work from the inside out. So we begin with h inverse at negative 1. Ask yourself h at what is negative 1. Here's the output value of negative 1. We can see that h at 7 is negative 1. Next, we move on to the outer function, which is another h inverse. But this time, we do h inverse at the 7 we just found. h at what is equal to 7? Here's the output value of 7. We see that h at negative 4 is 7. So that's the answer for number 11. The function f is defined over the closed interval from negative 4 to 8 as shown above. Let f inverse represent the inverse of f. Glancing ahead, they're asking about minimum value, maximum value. It will be very helpful if we know the domain and range of f and f inverse. They gave us the domain straight out. It is the closed interval from negative 4 to 8. Let's just write that down. So close interval from negative 4 to 8. I'm going to use interval notation. The range is the y values. From bottom to top, this graph goes from negative 3 to 7. So that's the range, negative 3 to 7. For f inverse, the domain and range will be reversed. Since the range of f was the closed interval from negative 3 to 7, the domain of f inverse will be the closed interval from negative 3 to 7. Since the domain of f was the interval from negative 4 to 8, the range of f inverse will be the interval from negative 4 to 8. Number 12. What is the minimum value of f inverse? For minimum and maximum, look at the range. The minimum value will be the lower limit of the range, which is negative 4. Similarly, for number 13, the maximum value will be the upper limit of the range, which is 8. Number 14, find f inverse at 4. Just ask yourself f at what is equal to 4. The output value of 4 is right here. We can see that f at 4 is equal to 4. So that's the answer. Number 15. Find f inverse at 7. Ask yourself f at what equals 7. Here's the output value of 7. And we can see that f at 8 is 7. So that's the answer. Number 16. Find f inverse at 6. Ask yourself f at what is equal to 6. Here's the output value of 6. And we can see that f at 7 is equal to 6. 
So that's the answer to number 16. Number 17, what is the domain of F inverse? Well, we found that right at the beginning. The domain of F inverse was the closed interval from negative three to seven. You can write your domain using interval notation or as an inequality. Number 18, what is the range of F inverse? Well, we found that too, didn't we? The range is the closed interval from negative four to eight. Again, you can write this range using interval notation or using an inequality. The function g is defined over the closed interval from negative five to five as shown above. Let g inverse represent the inverse of g. Values of the decreasing function h are given in the table above for selected values of x. Find the following if possible. Number 19. For this notation, we work from the inside out. So we begin with h at negative two. Let's see, h at negative two is four. Now we move to the outside. We must now evaluate g at four. g at four is two. Number 20. Evaluate h inverse at four. To evaluate h inverse at four, ask yourself h at what is equal to four. h at negative two is equal to four, so that's the answer. For number 21, we will work from the inside out, so we begin with h at negative one. h at negative, uh-oh, h is not defined at negative one. That's the end of number 21. Number 22, we work from the inside out. So we begin with H inverse at two. Ask yourself H at what is equal to two? Hmm, there's nothing. Since H inverse at two is undefined, the composite is also undefined. Hey guys, don't forget to like and subscribe. But also, if you found this video helpful, there's a lot more where that came from. You can click the upper link, which will take you to the whole unit playlist, or you can click the lower link, which will take you to the next video in the playlist. See you there.